His triumphant speech at New York's Cooper Union behind him, Lincoln barely slept before launching an exhausting but exhilarating speaking tour through New England. It proved an enormous boost to his prospects for the presidency. Overflow crowds in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and New Hampshire cheered him wildly. He certainly had earned a lot of applause and uh, reprint value, really the equivalent of network news coverage on all the networks. Such adulation was surely better than rest. It was the mother's milk that nourished political ambition. But after being absent from home for two weeks, he writes back to his wife and he says he's so tired, he wouldn't have even bothered to come if he had known how exhausting it was, which is really, truly, for Honest Abe, a little bit disingenuous because um, he needed to see his son, he needed to make the trip, he made $250, which was not bad. He was exposed to the whole Eastern elite of the Republican Party and emerges from this experience as a true alternative to the favorite regional candidate for president in his party, William Seward. But, you know, you don't want to tell your wife you're having a great time when you're on a two-week uh, hiatus, so uh, he just wrote back and complained. I have been unable to escape this toil, he confides wearily. If I had foreseen it, I think I would not have come east at all. But Lincoln deserves to be remembered not only as the person who preserved the Union, not only as the person who, who launched liberation for African Americans, but also as the greatest writer that the White House has ever seen and um, a literary giant whose words deserve to be examined in, from every angle. This is the only written record he left us of what he called the little speech-making tour that changed his life and changed American history.